And I'm Mr. Shoes. And we're here today with a quick video showing our stance on hostels versus hotels. It was Lipdale, Pennsylvania. It was the hottest day on the trail. I was suffering from a bit of heat stroke and we needed to get off the trail. I called my wife to see if she could find if there was a hotel in the area. And it was at that point where she changed my trail name from Mr. Shoes to JW. JW Marriott. On the way up the trail, we had opted for hotels over hostels. Early on, we found that the hostels were treating us like dollar signs and that they didn't really care about the comfort or the services that they were providing to the hikers or that they were meant to provide to the hikers. Now, on its face, you might think that $100 a night for a hotel is expensive, and it is. But if you look at the amount that you spend at a hostel, when you combine all of those little fees that they add up, you may be spending more at a hostel than you are at a hotel. A bunk for $25 in a big bunkhouse, $5 for a shower, $5 for a towel, $5 for laundry, one or two dollars for a soda, which we found very important along the trail and anything out of the fridge on the honor system, you find that the honor system is a very easy way for you to spend money without knowing that you're spending money. A hotel has a private bathroom, private beds, a continental breakfast, and the hotel will most likely have information on local shuttles that will get you back to the trail. They also have their own laundry facilities that are maintained and cleaned regularly. The number of times we washed our clothes in a mildew infested washing machine out in the backyard or some dilapidated garage and we ended up having our clothes come back smelling worse because they didn't smell like us they smelled like the dirty washing machine I would much rather have us smelling horribly because it was our own smell than the smell of some foreign washing machine and all of the other hikers filth that had been caught up in those filters for example, one time we did our laundry at a hostel, our clothes came back smelling like a ramen packet. You go smell blind, so you don't realize how bad you smell. But when you go to a hostel, you expect, if they're servicing through hikers that they're going to expect smelly through hikers to arrive. One hostel in particular, outside of Parisburg, smell shamed us to the point where they asked us to leave. Not to mention, we had just hiked through a week straight, seven days of rain. So add that on to whatever hiker smell you'd expect. Some hostels allow you to do some work to get some discounts off a bunk or some food or supplies. This smell shaming hostel had hikers doing mandatory work before they left and anything they decided to do out of the kindness of their hearts warranted no discount whatsoever off their already overpriced bunks. Interestingly enough, we went to a motel in Parisburg the next day, and the proprietor at the motel did our laundry for us without any hesitation. She laughed when we told them about our experience at the hostel, and she had said that she had been doing laundry for hikers for 25 years, and that we didn't smell nearly as bad as some of them who had come through. Now, the motel that we stayed in was a motel that if I was driving with our family and we needed a place to stay, we would probably drive right by because it didn't look like something that we would particularly like to stay in. And it was amazing to see the contrast from this little farmhouse hostel with unsuspectingly rude hosts and this dive motel in Parisburg where the owner treated us like family, taking us in smiling and laughing and set us right up in our room and did our laundry for us. We had stopped by a hostel in the Hundred Mile Wilderness, one of the only hostels up there. On our departure we were surprised that the amount owed was nearly $300 based upon the overpriced meal, the showers, the towels, the beds, and all the other amenities. Some hostels are run by very stand-up people with the hikers best intentions in mind. Many hostels, unfortunately, 
look at hikers as an opportunity to make a lot of money in a very short season. Decide whether or not the value you're getting from the hostel outweighs the authentic experience you think you're getting. We decided that hotels ultimately were better than hostels and that whatever authentic experience we were going to have on our through hike was going to be had on the trail. Looking back on my memories of the trail, while we were actually hiking, it was amazing. It was a great time. However, when we got to those hostels and I was so overjoyed to be there, looking back with fresh eyes, they were nothing special. In my opinion, they didn't add anything to the experience. So, if you can, get off the trail, stay in a hotel, recuperate, and get back on the trail the next day, we highly recommend you get a place where you can have your own room, your own space, and you can properly rest. I've been Canal Canut. And I'm Mr. Shoes. Everyone on the trail has their opinion. And this is ours. Oh, it ain't gonna rain no more, no more. It ain't gonna rain no more.